Hello and welcome to my guide to using 3D Canvas Pro to build Microsoft Train Simulator content, particularly locomotives. Uh, we're not going to build a locomotive straight away, we're just going to have a look at the software and, and how it works and also uh, for people that have never done 3D stuff before we'll have a look at some of the fundamental knowledge you'll need and uh, just some of the basics really. Um, when you open the 3D Canvas Pro up, you uh, have a pretty standard sort of uh, display. There's um, this uh, menu across the top here, um, the file, menu, edit menu, views, uh, etc. Um, this is a handy sidebar down the, on the left hand side of the screen here. It's um, grouped like a lot of things are these days with, with tabs. For the various um, main operations you'll be performing and the first tab though is customizable based on which of these buttons you have selected and each one of these buttons represents a tab that you could have used but you can combine different tabs on the same bar and there's a few already here moving along the top of the um, toolbar there's uh, added uh, controls for your views and the uh, type of coordinates systems we're using and here we have um, different uh, tools that will be displayed on the screen that you can turn on and off for instance that's the uh, grid you can turn that on and off and uh, finally the last set of controls are for um, how detailed and how much rendering you actually want to have when you're working on your model as opposed to uh, the final result when you export the model. Um, on the right hand side are the controlling tools and these are uh, for working on actual objects. We'll get to that. We'll see each one of those in action. And finally, is uh, down the bottom left of the main window is the uh, view control. And uh, we won't look at this at the moment, we'll have a look at something else first. All the work you do in 3D Canvas or any 3D editing software will mainly be with primitives. And that's really the only type of objects that 3D Canvas can manipulate, but uh, something like Maya or 3D Max can operate on NURBS and other interesting types of objects, but we don't need to worry about that today. On the side here, we'll be working with um, primitives, so we'll just select this tab, which will show us primitives. Now these are the basic shapes that you can use to build objects with and um, to get these into the into the action we, we have to drag and drop them onto the grid here, the uh, central part. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just I'll move the, uh, the view over and I'll drag and drop a cube just by clicking on it and then dragging it across. And it appears. Now that's a wireframe representation of the cube. We can change that to something else. If you have a look up on the top toolbar, there is a setting here for uh, your display. And we can change that to smooth. And you'll see that the cube is now filled in. It looks like how you'd expect and you can see all parts of it. To move around your view like this, I use the middle button of the mouse and you um, can click something with the middle button, like our cube here, and then move the mouse around and your view will change. Alternatively, you can click outside of any objects and that will control the zoom. You can hold down control and middle click and that will move you around the object. Shift 
is similar, but that's uh, more directly up and down. And Alt doesn't do anything. Well. So there's our cube. Now, when I move over it with the mouse, it uh, lights up. And that's called a bounding box. And if I click on it, it changes to, to um, a blue color to denote that I've selected it. And you'll also notice when you do it on your computer, if I don't select anything, nothing happens. But when I select something, this thing appears down here. Let's have a look at that. With the cube selected, we get to use the edit control. It only comes into, into play when there's an object selected. The edit control is used to manipulate primitives. It's, uh, it looks a bit weird at first, but it's, it's very straightforward. The thing to remember is, in 3D space, there are three axes, or axes. I don't know how you say that, but you know what I mean. And the uh, red arrow pointing this way is for X, and that's for left and right. And in this case, it's along this part of the cube. The blue arrow pointing that way is for in and out, and that's um, in and out of the screen itself, so that's along this way. And the green axis is for up and down. Now there are, you can perform operations on the cube like sizing it or moving it. To size it, we use the dark areas here. Now clicking on the cube to make sure it's selected and then clicking on one of these dark triangular panels and then sliding with, it held, with your button held down will actually scale that way along that plane that was along the Z axis it could just as easily go along the X and you want to make the cube taller we could scale it on the Y axis but um, what's happening here is the cube is scaling from the center out so it's actually going down underneath the grid when I scale it to a certain size that's not a problem we'll get around that the light colored triangular panels are used for transforming cube by 